And from schools and workplaces to concerts and nightclubs, innocent lives are being taken away in America by heavily armed suspects in active shooter situations. Which is why more law enforcement agencies across the country and right here in the Northland are investing in armored vehicles that can withstand the worst of the worst. It's a special report, The Tough Battle. The city of Superior is home to what's known as a Bearcat. They're ballistic protected on all sides. The newest armored vehicle in the Northland, specifically designed to rescue people from severe weather like floods and mudslides, but more importantly, create ballistic protection for SWAT and tactical teams, victims too, during standoffs, felony search warrants, or active shooter situations. So everything's heavy on this vehicle. The truck is built on a Ford F-550 chassis weighing 18,000 pounds, and it's made with bulletproof steel and bulletproof glass. There's a hatch in this, and it's a ballistic protected hatch. If people are getting shot or if we're in harm's way and you need to get out of a threat area, I could pack a lot of people in here. On the inside, it's still the Ford Dash and the, the Ford components. Superior Police Captain Thomas Champagne says the protection of a Bearcat allows for better access to high-risk situations. This will come in and we can get in close, try to communicate with that person, and de-escalate that situation. If that turns bad and they decide to start shooting at us, we're still protected from within this. We can still communicate. These are some examples from Lenco, the makers of the Bearcat, showing how the armored vehicle can take on repeated hits from all types of gunfire. We've seen an uptick in the active shooters at schools, at businesses, and so on. And here's a piece of equipment that in that type of scenario that we would utilize. Superior Police Chief Nicholas Alexander believes the $350,000 investment in a Bearcat, much of that through a state grant, is worth every dollar when it comes to protecting his officers and the community. I don't want it to be a situation where it was like, well, we didn't have money or so on when we're talking about uh, an injury or a fatality of, of, of one of our officers. I want, you know, to be able to know that we've taken steps to provide the best possible equipment to keep them safe to do the job that they're tasked with doing. With the purchase of the Bearcat came the release of this much bulkier military armored vehicle Superior had originally received through a federal surplus program. Making the switch is something Chief Alexander believes was the best move for many reasons. The Bearcat represents a nice balance between the needs that we have for an agency to keep our officers safe and the community safe uh, while recognizing some of the concerns of the public in terms of PTSD and triggering and militarization. <laughs> The surplus vehicle has since been transferred to the Washburn County Sheriff's Office at virtually no cost. Instead of using this refurbished ambulance for the tactical unit there with zero protection from bullets. It's been something that we've been wanting for quite a few years. Sheriff Dennis Stewart, a military veteran himself who served a tour of duty in Desert Storm, understands the vehicle may look scary to some, but he reminds us how scary the job of law enforcement can be. We're dealing with people on a daily basis out there who can buy armor like we wear. You know, up in northern Wisconsin here, how many households have deer rifles? Lots. A 12-gauge round will go through our ballistic vests. Sheriff Stewart doesn't expect the vehicle to be out more than about three times a year for high-risk calls, but he says you never know what tomorrow will bring. You know, it can be a simple domestic that you roll up to it originally, and it turns into something that's a high risk or, you know, or it's a death. Meanwhile, in Duluth, the biggest city of the Northland, the police department does not have its own armored vehicle. It instead has relied on mutual aid agreements with the city of Superior and the St. Louis County Sheriff's Office, as seen here in this standoff in Duluth in 2011. It buys you time and space and distance uh, while providing your staff being safe and have the opportunity to take someone into custody that is really suffering from a crisis. Duluth Police Chief Mike Teskin points to the Las Vegas mass shooting with the shooter above in a hotel as a big example of when an armored vehicle could be used to get to victims safely and help save lives. One, you have to go and eliminate the threat, right? But if you were going to be a responder, there's no way you get in there to start pulling bodies without armor. There's no way it happens, right? 
um, not, not safely. The Duluth Police Department does not have any immediate plans or funding to purchase an armored vehicle, but if it were to happen down the road, Chief Tuscan says the vehicle would be comparable to the civilian designed Bearcat, not a military surplus vehicle. The safety of our, our officers and communities is paramount. Um, we're a life-saving organization. Uh, we don't want to have anyone in our community injured. We certainly don't want to have any of our cops injured. And fellow law enforcement leaders on the other side of the bridge feel the same way as they begin year two with the Bearcat and no injuries when using the vehicle to date. It's obviously, you know, one tool in a, a tool belt of options that we use for dealing with people who are in crisis or are some sort of threat to harming ourselves or others. All right, and in all, St. Louis, Douglas, Washburn, and Sawyer counties all have some type of armored vehicle along with the city of Superior. The two vehicles you saw here in that story tonight uh, are equipped with cameras that record all calls just like squad cars and body cameras.